All right, I want to say that I have concerns about the Supreme Court ruling it making being in the parks illegal uh, at whatever times that the, the city chooses because there's various times that they choose for the parks to be illegal like there's the t typical night time there's holidays there's special events there's there's various uh, reasons that a city can make up to close the park they could close it for covid and make it illegal for people to be in the park because the Supreme Court says that they're not discriminating between homeless or a, just a, tra a rich traveler, just just people who want to stay in the park who got tons of money, and and uh, the city or that the 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 law doesn't discriminate based on uh, the status of your income. The law doesn't discriminate. Statistics reveal that the uh, poor people tend to be the ones who utilize the parks the most. I think uh, James Carville, an old advisor to Bill Clinton, said something that was very interesting to me about his perspective on parks. He's a Democrat and he takes a Democratic uh, approach to to things, which uh, with with his views on parks, I've, I I agree. I like I like his view. He said that he used to work in the parks, cleaning up seaweed out of the lakes and probably other things too. But while he would clean up the seaweed, he'd run that that big machine that you you, you may or may not have seen. Uh, run across the lakes picking up the seaweed he would see along the shoreline homeless people or what appear to be homeless people lounging around all day on the shoreline in the park while he's out working and he's just he thought to himself or or maybe somehow he got that thought that the thought that he He's, he's making use of the government resources just as much as those homeless people are. He's getting paid to, to uh, churn up the, the, the algae or the seaweed out of the, the lake uh, and, and, and making, making use of, of those outdoor resources in his way and, and the homeless people lounging around at the park are using it in their way. Everybody has a different purpose on how they use the park. So <clears throat> we all have different purposes. The parks are designed in different ways. You got your sports parks, dog parks, uh, kids playgrounds, group functions where there's shelters that people can hold parties. Some people just want to lounge around by themselves. Walking parks, people walk around yeah, on a, a trail of some t kind, paved or unpaved, through the woods, through an open, open field. The parks used to be an old forest or an old plot of land in some way that was donated by a rich person who owned a lot of property, and they have a little statue. They have a little. Uh, uh, stone marker signifying that they were the owners you know uh, I don't know Gretna Wilder owned this property and and uh, donated it to the city and and there's just different ways that the city acquires parks and because of those different ways they, they uh, develop different attitudes and how how precious the parks are some parks are heavily fenced Others are open. I mean, there's there's different there's different security measures used based on uh, how it's used. I mean, there's just there's just such a variety of parks out there. I've I've been in quite a few, and 
and seeing the and made made different uses of of the parks I, I generally go in to look for I look for electricity water bathrooms they're not all essential helpful but not needed I look for uh, sometimes I look for Wi-Fi there's some parks that actually provide Wi-Fi and and it's it has been uh, at least one time a Lions Park providing Wi-Fi it's just a surprise how that works but I mean it's just the priority of, of the manager of the park but with this recent Supreme Court ruling People, the cities can take a harder stance against people using the park. They can they can shorten the hours more, and then say that if you want to use the park outside of uh, the designated hours, you need a permit. Go get a permit at City Hall. That's what I was told uh, by uh, one cop in in a small town in Illinois. <laughs> If you want to use it after dark, go get a permit. And this is a park that closes from sunset to sun up. That's the worst hours that a park can set. And they can get away with that. To see, that's a thing. Are the that's that's what needed to be argued at the Supreme Court level are the the set hours, how the hours are set. There's, there's, uh, what, what were the hours set in Grand, the Grants Pass, Oregon, uh, um, like legal battle, legal is issue. What were those hours at that particular park? See, there's details that I'm missing, but I'll say that the worst hours I've seen are sunset to sun, sundown, or sun up to sundown. Uh, you, you can only use it. As soon as the, that sun goes beyond the horizon, it's it's uh, that's that's the time to get out, get out of that park. It's it's like a wild west, get out of town uh, ultimatum, and they they do that, and and they can legally do that. All parks can do that. So um, and uh, so that's that's something to be really concerned about. So they they could go harder on their their hours they could put a few more rules up in uh on the on the greet on the board when you when you enter the park they have the, the list of rules they could say now um no no camping no no homeless activity in some way they, they can uh, they could be a little harder on on the the rules because the supreme court made it clear that they're supporting this this measure of, of kicking homeless people out at night or sleeping in the park were they sleeping at night I'm just making an assumption maybe these homeless people were were caught during the daytime which is more alarming to me caught during the daytime sleeping in a park and the city found them guilty the appeals court found them guilty the state supreme court found them guilty they go to the federal supreme court and they find them guilty. All the levels, all the appeals processes, all those judges, guilty, guilty, guilty. And uh, were the reasons uh, on the same lines? Or maybe the, uh, the new lawyers on the federal level changed the argument a little bit. That's something to look into. What's, what's the history of, of this case? Uh, how did it develop? Because uh, I think they can kind of change the argument a little bit. They can't bring in new evidence. They can't retry the case, uh, but they can they can uh, appeal decisions on 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 the, the the information within the case, and and they focus maybe did they folk did they focus on the same thing about the being labeled a homeless? I think they probably did actually. They probably focused on the same theme throughout at the uh, first from the first appeals court to the last appeals court there's no other higher appeals court to go to so they went through quite a few judges uh, what one two three at least three groups of judges plus the individual city judge finding the homeless 
people guilty. This individual city judge, and then three groups of judges after that. And you could pretty pretty much bet that we're talking, you know, 15,000, 20,000, and maybe maybe another thirty thousand dollars maybe they might have spent less than they might have spent between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars just uh, sleep in parks and uh they they lost and that money just goes to waste so you know and that money has to be put up front from somebody somehow they got the money to pay for the lawyers to make these arguments and uh now that that money can't be recuperated uh, the decision's been made. They, they, they tried, and it just didn't work out. And uh, they, you know, they would have uh, helped. That 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 uh, case could have benefited the, the the greater, the greater good for the nation. But I mean, the argument that they used is sounds sounds kind of weak about being labeled homeless, and that's how that's how the law is structured is to pick on the poor. I'd like to. Well, I mean, I'm no, I'm no lawyer. I don't know what they think is important, but I, I think the limit, the limitation in hours, is extremely unre unreasonable about the sun up to sun down. You can't go into the and and the and the, it's it's very biased in how that's enforced because usually the the uh, cops don't care as much if you show up a little earlier when it's dark when it's nighttime early in the morning like 5 a.m before the sun rises that they i think assume those types of people are okay uh sometimes cops have approached me at the early hours but it hasn't been it's not as hostile as when a cop approaches you at nighttime after dark or even before the the closing hours just to warn you that they're about to close. Okay, it's it's a more hostile uh, situation in the parks in the evening time than it is in the morning if you're outside the hours of those ex extreme limitations from sun sun uh, set to sun up. But I'd I'd like to see that get disputed because there's cities, there's towns out there. Who are saying sunset to sun up? You can't be there, and that changes throughout the year. I mean, we've just experienced in June, June 23, one of the longest days of the year. So, actually, is there anything to dispute uh, this time of year? Uh, it, the sun don't go down to almost 9 p.m. That's not too bad. So you get an extended amount of time, but then in the winter time sundown is 4 30 and you got you can get a ticket at 4 30 in the summertime or in the winter time whereas you can get a ticket at nine it'd be more a ticket would have to be pushed back until not about almost 9 p.m so 4 5 30 6 30 7 30 you know it's a three and a half hour difference and it's just ridiculous how how that's how that's uh fluctuates based on the season um, whether it's yeah where there's dark and you know darkness darkness is the ultimate issue here if, if the Sun you know, in in the the the, uh, the city uses the and um, uses the uh, how the the geography changes the geographical um, change happens um, uh, to their advantage there you you know that's so so that's that's uh that's just why why that reasoning comes about is is uh, something that people might not understand some some lawmakers uh, today may not understand why it's sunset to sun up uh, why you know could maybe that was settled you know a few a couple generations ago this this law and then they just kind of you know it's just how things have always been done and and uh they don't they don't question why why that is uh it, why why did they decide that are there records of the discussions on sun sunset to sun sun up 
um, I've, I've not seen it. Uh, I'd be interested in, in learning and more about uh, the, the thought process that goes into making that type of decision. Uh, what what uh, benefits uh, to the city is there? Because uh, a lot of these towns and stuff, they, they set that up and then there's exceptions to that rule. And if you don't fall in that exception, you can get uh, fined. So if you have what uh, a sports event or or some kind of nighttime event like uh, when the year the year 2000 was uh, 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 rolling over, there were celebrations. There, you know, New Year's, maybe Fourth of July, the parks have to the parks will extend their hours. So this Fourth of July, we're looking at. Uh, um, a more stringent park policy be, be, because of the the Supreme Court so how, how how can cities handle that they can give out more tickets for anybody who stays after the 4th of July celebrations people who may want to stick around the park the city can be a little harder on those people because the Supreme Court will support them and and uh, I mean it, does, it doesn't discriminate from homeless people to anybody who wants to celebrate a little extended for an extended period of time in the park, and and the city is is being treated uh, as as uh, more of a, a a corporation that can set more stringent standards on a public property. It's a public property that the city can and treat. As, as more like a corporation for only the very privileged people uh, within within their their influence group within their base groups you know it's, it's it, it can be very politi political political politicized uh, uh, d d to determine who is um, who, who is granted permission to use the park out at night pretty much outside of of a normal what they would probably they would they would argue that it's only normal to use the parks when there's daylight out so if if you're not a part of their political organization you know you follow along with their their uh their their line their 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 ways of doing things if you're not supporting them then you're the outsider and and you're just uh you're, you're going to have to suffer their more stringent policies and that's supported by the court it's it's really tough to deal with all I could do is just sneak around that's that's you know I don't have my own army all I can do is sneak around on this so I'm, I'm gonna stop here